Well, uh, this is a lecture on uh, unbalanced detection. In fact, this is the first of the series of this module, wherein after uh, having understood the rudiments of signal processing and of course, the elements of machinery maintenance and condition monitoring, we are now specifically coming to how do we detect different kinds of faults in rotating machines. And to begin with, uh, we are going to start with uh, unbalanced, the most common form of mechanical defect in any rotating machinery. Well, now before we begin into this lecture, uh, let me tell you what do we mean by unbalance. Okay. As you all know, in this uh, machines of ours, we are always going to have shafts which will be rotating and these shafts are supported on bearings and these shafts will be rotating at very high speeds, low speeds whatever. Now, if for some reason there is an unequal distribution of the mass which is rotating around this center line, geometrical center line of the body and there is a small mass m. Okay. This mass because it is not uniformly distributed is going to give a force m omega square r okay. and this force is going to be uh, radial in nature, going to be a function of the speed, function of the distance of the unbalanced location from the center of axis and because of this extra force which is coming on to the system, the rotor or the shaft in this case, there will be extra reaction forces or in effect the bearings are subjected to forces much more or beyond what they were initially designed and selected for. When a designer selects a bearing, they know the radial loads coming to that uh, bearing and then they design and select the select and design the bearings. But on top of it, if I have this extra force they are going to add to it and another problem you will see is this force is not a constant force as a function of time. Since it is rotating, this force is also fluctuating. So, this compounds the problem fluctuating force. So, if you will recall your you know, fatigue design of shafts. Because of such fluctuating forces, the material of the shaft is going to fail quickly in comparison to the case of a static force. Okay. So, presence of an unbalanced force leads to such excessive fatigue force and then that leads to a failure of the system. Okay. So, now let us look at it from a different perspective. Let us look at a disc which is rotating. this has an initial mass uh, has a mass m rotating. Okay. So, this has a radius r at some location e I have a small mass sorry small mass m at a location of e. Okay. So, the amount of unbalance can be uh, unbalanced force can be written as given by this expression okay so we can define the for a particular uh, let me take this back here
Okay. I will uh, I will define the uh, unbalanced mass. I will come to this uh, expression later on, okay, wherein uh, we can define the amount of unbalanced. I will first uh, define it and then come back to this slide. Now, this disk could be thin, which is rotating about the shaft this is a thin disk with an unbalanced mass here so in this case if i support this disk on knife edges like this Okay, and this is going to always come down because of gravity this location and this is the case of a static unbalance where the forces are only in one plane unbalanced force is in one plane. Now, imagine instead of this disc, I have a long rotor like a, the rolls of a paper mill. If I have an unbalanced mass at this location and if I have an unbalanced mass at this location, so this is giving me an unbalanced force in this direction and this is giving me an unbalanced force in this direction. So, my floor, from a force point of view, this is balanced, okay. but you see this because they are in different planes, they give rise to a couple. Okay. And this is what is termed as dynamic unbalance. Some in some books or some literature, they say this is a couple type of unbalance and then they have a dynamic unbalance where these forces are actually inclined to some axis. Okay. Okay. But in our class we are, we are going to treat one as the static unbalance and other is the as the dynamic unbalance. So, in the case of static unbalance you know it is very easy to balance it by estimating what is the amount of unbalance? I can put an another mass opposing to it and then balance it. In the case of dynamic unbalance, just balancing these does not uh, happen. We have to balance, put some more weights in another planes so that the couples are also uh, reduced or couples are balanced. We will come to dynamic unbalance later on. Okay. Now, of course, one of the fundamental assumptions we are doing in this uh, balancing is or unbalance is these are rigid rotors, but you know from our class of uh, the rotor, rotor dynamics that the rotors have many degrees of freedom and then they have they ha need to be treated as flexible rotors. But as long as the operational speed speed of the rotor is less than the critical speed, of course, to begin with the first critical speed, I can consider it to be a rigid rotor and balancing at one location or putting a weight at one location balances the shaft. But when I talk about you know, steam turbines or gas turbines, where there are where it is a long shaft having sets of compressors, uh, vanes and uh, turbine vanes 
these are long shafts and as you know there will be many critical speeds critical speeds okay so balancing uh, balancing may not be possible in one plane because you know, if, if i if i think of the mode shapes of the shaft at many speeds you know this could be a mode shape this could be the second mode shape this could be the first mode shape and so on okay sometimes you know because of mode locations uh, this may have no motion but then if i balance here try to reduce it okay but then i am not doing anything here okay so in case of flexible balancing we have to balance in different planes okay and of course you know we always uh, should not run at the critical speed away from the critical speed just so that we do not have the condition uh, condition of resonances but in this class our attention is focused to this rigid rotors and we are looking at operational uh, operational speeds less than the first critical speed okay so balancing can be a very very complex phenomenon when you are talking about uh, long rotors large rotors uh, when there are sets of uh, disc could be compressors could be turbines could be you know some sort of blower fan sets when if it's a long rotor it is a flexible rotor there will be many critical speeds and it's a difficult task to balance those multiple in balancing okay though people do that there are software which you can do that but in this course we will focus our attention to very simple maybe a jeff cot rotor with a shaft which is uh, rotating below the critical speed it has a disc which has an unbalanced mass how do we balance it and what are the effects of it and how would you how do we detect such unbalance and that is the first part which you need to look into it well uh, before i go to in, go into how we detect the unbalance what are the possible sources of unbalance one of course if if the component for example many many components in rotating systems are casted for example in an uh, automobile flywheel is a very very important component in a um, uh, in a ic engine could be um, particularly in the single cylinder or two stroke engines um, couple of cylinders of course and if you have more number of cylinders the cycles are balanced and then the flywheel will be, will be of a lesser size but i'm talking about a single and a four cylinder three cylinder engines wherein the flywheel is mounted after the clutch okay uh, oh sorry after the crankshaft so that we reduce the cyclic engine variations and imagine such a flywheel has an un uh, amount of unbalanced mass so this is going to give an unbalanced force onto the shaft and this is uh, not uh, desirable and usually flywheels are casted okay there are many uh, engineering applications i will tell you for example you would have seen the alloy wheels in uh, the automobiles or wheels on particular the other rims okay say okay on, on which we have the this is the tire this is the rim and this could be an alloy wheel rim okay and which is actually casted you can understand if this casting has a defect or there is some sort of an unbalanced mass every rotation of the wheel you are going to get a force like this okay and imagine the scenario it can be complicated if you have a vehicle which four wheel drive or four wheels and everyone is giving 
a force they may not be in phase when one is giving the force in this direction other is giving it in this direction other is giving it in this direction other is giving it in this direction so imagine you would have an erratic motion of a vehicle okay and th these are undesirable okay bumpy rides you know forces coming from the wheels because of unbalance so i'm sure all of you must have uh, realized it or witnessed when you buy a tire and we mount it on the rims or rims okay they have and if you go to any automobile uh, garage they have wheel balancers okay they advertise that because I, and then if you notice more, no, particularly not in the alloy wheels from the front you cannot see but if you go to the casted uh, steel wheels you will see a small amount of weight given here depending on because of the the balance they would have attached a, a balancing weight to it okay and those of you who are riding bicycles must have experienced it if you have a bad tire okay so we we always do that when we are students okay if if the uh, tire was uh, weak we didn't have uh, enough money to change the tire we would go to the cycle guy then he would put a layer of cut tire in between okay and then you would have a patchwork and then if you rode that kind of a cycle you would get a periodic hits on your seat okay bumps okay this is because of unbalance okay now imagine if this kind of things rotate at very very high speeds omega so forces will be very very high and these forces are finally taken up at the supports so bearings will be subjected to fatigue damage and then they will fail much quickly okay first is unpleasant ride quality in vehicles and then bearings will be getting subject to fatigue load this will be uh, this will be not good for the machine or in cycle or automobile in this case this is true for the case of uh, fans and blowers particularly in industries uh i'll i'll come to that uh, this uh, just in just in a while a little bit uh, so one possible source of unbalance is whenever we have casted components there could be casting defects blow holes which leads to uneven uh, distribution of the mass and thus we have the case of unbalance one is another one the next one is the case of uh, certain installation issues imagine we have a large system okay and which has to be put in place perfectly between the bearings okay and they have to be in the geometric center line of the system okay now imagine if yeah imagine if uh, this was uh, not in the center line okay and there was a slight offset okay so this is going to give rise to an unbalance so when the geometric center does not match with the uh, the line which connects the center of mass then there will be a problem and then things will wobble so wobbling will lead to the case of uh, unbalance as well so while installation people have to take care of these issues also another case which happens is the case of in the case of maintenance particularly in the plants wherein we have lot of blowers maybe a fd fan forced draft fan fd fan fd fan basically what happens when you have a this is a chimney okay and then we put an fd fan here
and these are the gases okay which are you know after burning the coal actually okay there is a lot of fly ash in these gases okay what happens so uh, because to give an extra draft to the fan we put a fan and this fan basically pushes out the gases out of the chimney because the chimney is at a certain height because we do not want to re release the gases all around us we send it high up and then send it so that they disperse and can fly off to large places okay the problem is with fly ash fly ash on top of it, it if it is wet and moist they will become like a sludge and then they will you know this fans have blades i am just so with time what happens these fly ashes get deposited they stick to the fan blades okay and then once they stick they they may not stick uniformly in some location they may get stuck okay and then this gives rise to a fan which is unbalanced and then i have seen cases wherein these fans are filled the blade shear off and the bearings get damaged because of this excessive fatigue force which went unnoticed because things got deposited in the blades this happens in lot of chemical plants and food processing plants also when you are talking about a say dry milk powder okay you have seen how the dry milk powder becomes sticky once it gets uh, in contact with moisture or water imagine when you have a in the milk processing plant you have lot of agitators and mixtures okay agitators and mixtures are nothing but again some high speed churning devices in in, in a tank churning devices again the same thing if i feed in certain material which is susceptible to moisture and then it becomes sticky uh, they will uh, they will stick to the blades and then because this rotating then unbalance and finally you will say some fine day this thing has failed okay because of excessive fatigue loading again these things happen so periodically in many of these plants be it the Uh, fd fan in a power plant be it an agitator in a uh, food processing plant periodically in regular maintenance they scrape off and there are uh, alarm levels also if suddenly the they see that the weight increases etc they know that something is getting deposited you're talking about you know iron ore sintering plant okay a lot of things uh, happen okay a lot of uh, places where things can get stuck they will create an unbalance and then things will break off okay so uh, the sources of unbalance are manufacturing defect installation issues maintenance issues and so on and then uh, the question is what is the tolerable limit of unbalance okay see everything can be balanced okay but how less should this force be reduced to and how much should be uh, acceptable this is a function given by this curve here one it says the speed of the machine and other is the acceptable residual unbalance per unit of rotor weight that is given is gram per millimeter per kg where the denominator is the a uh, so acceptable unbalanced mass because if i unbalanced force is m e omega square if i if i remove the speed unit out 
f by omega square is equal to m e. So, either can I can say as gram per millimeter okay, and then if it is a particular speed I know what is residual and uh, the mass this is the mass of the rotor in kg. Okay. So, for large levels you know G 830 means a very very high mass rotor and if you will see this is G 0 0.04 and with speed okay, the amount of unbalance which you can tolerate obviously will reduce because with speed anyway we have a very high force omega square. So, obviously at the same grade will have higher levels of unbal acceptable unbalance at lower speeds that is obvious intuitive. Okay. And this is the case of a precision balancing you know, imagine uh, in, in uh, watches etcetera if there was you know, this was not precision balanced okay, then we will have a lot of problems. But when I am talking about a, you know maybe a steam engine or, or a big drum a big uh, cement mill drum which is rotating at very low speeds i can this the numerator can be very very high okay so depending on the grades of unbalance this chart is given as per the iso 1940 standard they have classified the grades of unbalance as to how much of acceptable uh, quantity is uh, unbalanced how much is not balanced when we should go for unbal unbalancing and so on so, this is a grade, it is a reference because we never know. No, I have got a residual unbalance of 100, uh, sorry, at one, of 1 gram uh, rather than a point, uh, 0.1 gram. Is it okay? Is 1 gram okay? Is 0.1 gram okay? Is 0 0.01 okay? Or 1 kg okay? We do not know. Then we have to follow the standard and accordingly we have to specify that. Another very important thing we have to keep in mind is of course, you know we will we'll talk about this in the next class balancing or unbalance is defined or specified at a particular operating speed. Okay. If I have balanced a component at a particular rpm n you know, n by n rpm okay i obviously the amount of unbalance will get magnified if i make an n I, if i operate it at n star which is much much higher than n because of the omega square term the residual unbalance which was there will get magnified if i increase the speed so, it is always safe to balance a system at a at its operational speed. Okay. Otherwise, if I operate suppose I balance it at 2400 rpm and then try to operate it at 4800 rpm, I am magnifying the amount of uh, residual unbalance which is there. So, usually best rule of thumb is you know, suppose it is uh, operating at uh, 600 rpm you also balance it at 600 rpm okay but usually uh, there is a problem that we do not have high speed uh, balancing machines so usually people uh, try to uh, do it at a lesser uh, rotational rpm and then try to operate it at a higher rpm but that we have to be careful that we do not run it at too much of a higher speed than it was intended to be balanced for now, uh, this is a typical balance quality grades. This is from the same uh, standard of ISO 1940. Now, you say this balance quality grade, it says Z 0 0.4. This is basically for spindles, disc, armatures, or <coughs> precision gyros um, grinders and gyroscopes. I will just come to G 100. This is the crankshaft drives of fast diesel engines with six or more cylinders, complete engines for cars and trucks G 100 grade. Okay. When you have uh, say G 1600 crankshaft drives of rigidly mounted large two cycle engines and marine engines etcetera 
So, uh, for small gas turbines, steam turbines, rigid turbine generator sets, it is G 2.5. So, balance quality grades which uh, we have to balance is actually specified by such uh, standards. Okay. Now, question is with this brief understanding of unbalance, what are the effects it can have on systems? Because many machinery components actually start failing because of balance, uh, unbalance. Because see what happens, unbalance gives rise to excessive forces at the supports. So, supports the bearings will then get dam damaged. So, we may be alarmed because of a bearing failure, but the initial problem could be something else not could, could not be bearing failure. To say that again, unbalance if it goes undetected, unbalance is going to give rise to forces at the bearings. The bearings are subjected to high forces, the bearings are going to fail and then we will be maybe if the bearings are making noise etcetera, bearings fail, shafts are going to fail. So, eventually we will be drawn uh, to a failed bearing or a failed shaft, but the initial culprit could have been an uh, unbalance which was uh, undetected. Just for that examples, I told you something is getting deposited on the veins and blades which went unnoticed. Okay. But there are many ways uh, to find out unbalance and uh, a vibration again is a helpful tool to help us detect vibration and I will give you two specific examples how vibrations helps us uh, detecting uh, unbalance uh, in a couple of cases. In one case, we have a rotor maybe on this rotor we have a disc which has an unbalance and then we have this rotor supported on bearings and what I do here is I put a accelerometer say axle 1, axle 2 and there is an unbalance. So, I am getting a m omega square e unbalance force. Now, of course, you know if you look in the from the side the rotor will look something like this. So, this is my vertical direction, this is my horizontal direction and of course, this is my axial direction. Okay. In this example, I am measuring the vibrations at two locations. This is bearing 1, bearing 2 because I can ov obviously only put the accelerometers at fixed rigid locations and these are necessarily bearing 1 and bearing 2. So, imagine what is going to happen because of this unbalance. This shaft is going to bow. Okay. So, because of this bowing because of the unbalanced force, I am going to have very high vibrations. Okay. There will be this vertical or horizontal, this accelerations will be much much higher than the axial and they will be at the 1 x frequency. By 1 x frequency, I mean it is at the rotational speed, fundamental rotational speed. Fundamental rotational speed, okay. and uh, this is uh, strongly harmonic because you can uh, you can understand if the rotating unbalance. with every time it is going to change, okay, it is going to be a sinusoidal. Okay. So, because the sinusoidal motion 
I am going to have uh, it's a harmonic and obvi obviously with speed because of the omega uh, square term the vibration amplitude is going to increase like a parabola okay, with with time sorry this is with omega ok because of the square term <coughs> and another very important thing which you have to notice in uh, detecting of such unbalances this is in phase between the support of the bearings that means by in phase I mean whenever the acceleration at location 1 is a maximum the vibration at location 2 is also a maximum. So, that means the phase relationship between them is 0 degrees or close to 0 degrees that means they are in phase. If I was to plot in an oscilloscope if I if I if I draw two lines here this is for uh, V 1, V 2 time ok this is for bearing 1 and this is for bearing 2. By in phase I mean whenever this guy is maximum this guy is a maximum whenever this guy is a minimum this is a minimum. So, they are all in phase or the phase difference between them zero okay but this is very ideally speaking uh, it's nice to tell it in, the, in in notes but once you go to the fields to measure because no system is perfect when when i when i when i drew a sinusoidal if, if i show you an unbalanced uh, time history of a signal this is no way close to this because in a machine everything is mixed up you know this sensor which you put on the bearing ok. This this measures lot of things this measures the bearing vibrations the on top of the uh, unbalances ok. This this measures the suppose the soft had some other problem like a loose things were loose soft had a crack soft were misaligned. So, all these vibration signals are going to come into uh, this accelerometer here. So, these are the diagnostic techniques or routines which we have to follow to ensure that it is unbalanced on and not looseness or misalignment or crack shaft. So, these are the processes by which we can know or we can be sure that yes there is an unbalance because I am having an high radial force or high radial vibration compared to the vibration in the axial direction and then of course, the vibrations between the two bearings are in phase or they are at 0 degree. You may not quite get 0 degree, you may get 10 degree, 20, 20 degree, but you know well this is this is not 0 because of other reasons, but then we are going to get uh, a sure test that this is the case of unbalance. Okay. And uh, this configuration is true when the rotor is in between bearings and as I told you right in the beginning that we are talking about the balancing of rigid rotors in a um, bearing uh, uh, where the ro uh, rotational speed is less than the critical speed. But there could be another configuration I am sorry yeah there could be or before I go here I just want to show this and uh, this is what we have uh, measured here. Now, you see uh, we measured signal 3 is 1 accelerometer signal 2 is 1 accelerometer which you have mounted on maybe if I go back uh, and draw it here again. Okay, this is my uh, channel 2, channel 3, wherein we have a disk 
I, I will show you a picture of this setup in the next class. Okay. And if I look, look here, and this is the in phase vibrations, and uh, the top plot is the cross spectrum. Okay, cross spectrum establishes the delay between each other. In this case, we have the phase and the magnitude. Most important is the phase here, and this was rotating at 24.06 hertz, you know, close to about 1440 rpm. This corresponds to about 24 hertz. Okay, and uh, you can see this. This is about 24.063 because you know this is what the finally the shaft was rotating at uh, 1440 rpm. Okay, and then uh, in the oh, sorry. If you will see this dotted line here, if you can see it, here the cursor has been put at 24.063 hertz and the y in phase is about 13.149 degrees. Okay. And if you, of course, the cross spectrum you cannot see here, actually it should have been the magnitude and you will see a very strong component in the cross spectrum of course, you would have seen the auto spectrum as well and this indicates that there is a high level of vibration. I have not shown you the axial uh, vibrations uh, that was too low, uh, less in this case and this was uh, actually a simulated in an experimental rig wherein we introduced a an, uh, mass of unbalance and rotated it and measured the phase between 2 and 3. I did not report here the axial directions because it was too less but all you have to I wanted to show you regarding the in phase vibrations and they are in phase. Okay. Another case is uh, when we have a case of an overhang rotors. In case of an overhang rotors, the configuration is like this. I have a shaft onto which I put a disc and they are supported on two bearings and this is the overhang part. Okay, and they are rotating. Okay. Now, in the previous example, when the shaft was supported in between two bearings, I had told you that uh, there will be strong radial vibrations. In, in overhang vibration uh, uh, unbalances, there may be also a strong axial vibrations this direction as well as this direction. Okay. And though the axial vibration may be unsteady and axial phase between these two may be little unstable, they may not be stable. Okay. And this is again a case of an example wherein on the overhang rotor unbalance can be detected. But the problem with unbalance detection is many. So, what are the problems associated with unbalance detection. One problem is whenever we have an unbalance or we have a machine rotating at a particular speed, I will get a 
harmonic vibration because it is periodic vibrations. If I look at look at it in the frequency spectrum, I will always get a 1 x component and this is because of the rotational speed. But think of it any machine, it has to rotate at its rotational speed and so in any vibration measurements I am bound to get this rotational speed in the spectrum. So, this may be misleading, I have seen many a times people when they see a rotational speed they say well no, it is unbalanced, that is not true because this rotational speed is fundamentally because of the physics of the problem it is there. Of course, you know this, this can be less, this can be more, but think of it this way if it, this was misaligned, this was uh, bearing I am still going to have a rotational speed coming up. So, just seeing in the spectrum a frequency at 1 x you should not be biased to detect unbalance. So, 1 x does not mean unbalance, this is very very important. Because the reasons of 1 x are many, it is a fundamental rotational speed, it is uh, uh, there could be looseness, there could be misalignment, there could be cracks there could be bearing defects. So, how do you sh say for sure that this is an unbalance and that is when you look into the phase relationship between few transducers, that is when you look into the relative amplitude between the radial and the axial. Okay. So, because many times another problem is only radial data is available. Okay. Number 3 which is common to any machine is rotational speed not known. For a system, simple rotor system wherein we can measure the rotational speed of the shaft is not a problem, but think of a multi stage gearbox. Think of a multi stage gearbox wherein I have an input shaft, and of course, there are a lot of intermediate shafts and then okay, I have bearings at every location. Okay, these are all the So, the speeds of this intermediate shaft sometimes are not known because I do not know the gear ratios okay. and there could be a problem of unbalance here because of you know, one tooth broke, it fell, it created an unbalance, but I'm, I, I can put an accelerometer here and measure. So, I, if I do not know the right as a rotational speed, I am not able to pinpoint what is uh, which shaft is having an unbalance. So, these are the problems associated with uh, unbalance. Another thing is uh, very very careful is when we have to compare the radial that is the vertical and horizontal with axial, we have to be sure that they have been calibrated, the accelerometers are calibrated and when I say I mean 10 meters per second square in a particular direction, I also mean that this has been calibrated uh, for that level. Okay. 
otherwise you know when I am when I am getting a value of 10 meters per second square here and this was not calibrated I am getting a value of 8 meters per second square there is no way I should be able to compare I should be comparing these two. So, people uh, mistake or miss these uh, instances when they do the uh, unbalanced uh, detection. Okay. We have to be careful that these kind of uh, problems uh, are taken care of. So, to <coughs> summarize in this class, we uh, looked into the causes of unbalance or in fact, first we defined what is static unbalance and what is uh, dynamic unbalance how we define the grades of uh, balancing and then uh, most important it, uh, is to know what is the source of unbalance in a system and then uh, how do we detect unbalance. So, the source detection is very very important. Now, once we have detected unbalance as opposed to other mechanical system uh, faults like looseness, misalignment, cracks. Uh, through signal processing or through the signal processing of the measured vibration, we can pinpoint and be sure that an unbalance has occurred in the system. And uh, in the next class, we will see that how this uh, balancing can be reduced and then how we can balance a system which is rotating. Okay. Thank you.